It was about 10 minutes in the second half left when I was like, okay, this is probably gonna be ours. And I was, I was trying to stay locked in. I tried to not to veer off on um, the victory just yet, but that's when I think I knew like um, we had it in the bag. We worked hard, we grinded all year long just to, to get to this very moment. So as soon as the buzzer sounded, I was super excited. I jumped up in the air and all of that. Like we, we won, we, was a, we worked hard to get to this spot and we actually made it. So that was just a surreal, surreal feeling and I'm very thankful for it. After the last game when we was actual uh, conference champions, when we went to the locum, coach was dancing, we was pouring water all over him. It was an incredible experience. I don't even know what I was doing, I don't remember. Everybody was just running around, jumping in the crowd. It was, it was great though, it was a great feeling. Like, especially being picked last. Like. It was uh, well deserved. I put the work in, my staff put the work in, and my players put the work in. They bought in and believed what I was talking about, and they grew as a team, and the chemistry was great. But to be in last place to first place, that was one of the best turnarounds, and to be honest about it, in NCAA college basketball history. We're, we're building something pretty good here, and we're just gonna keep building. You know, the day that we left for New Orleans, I think there was a, a very, I think everyone was cautiously optimistic. I felt good at the level how our team was playing. At that time, we were really playing, and we were peaking at the right time. We practiced, like everybody's, like we had just came off a loss to Georgia State, so everybody's ready to get back on the court. We lost bad too, so we had to redeem ourselves. We were playing at Georgia Southern, and we already beat them before, so we're like, okay, we might go, we, we have to win this, like we have to. As we started loading the bus, after practice was finished, we started loading the bus. That's when I, I had a gut feeling like, oh, we might have to turn around because I started seeing my phone. I'm like, oh, it might not be good for us. Before we pulled out of the parking lot, I always sit behind Preston Laird, one of the assistant coaches, who's my dear friend, and he turned to me and said, Tuck, there ain't gonna be a tournament. So in the NCAA, the Big Ten, the SEC, and American all out canceling their respective tournaments moments ago. 13 conference tournaments have now been canceled and this morning we have critically uh, been critical of the Big East and rightly in my judgment but they will not play the second half and that tournament has now been canceled. Creighton and St. John's were actually on the floor Madison Square Garden went to the locker room for halftime. The teams playing in the next game have been told not to come to the arena. Providence and Butler and now we have word that the Big East has followed suit and canceled that tournament as well. Whenever I was sitting at home, I was watching the games. Well, I turned on the TV to watch the games and I noticed that a lot of things were being canceled. I looked on my phone and social media and everything is being canceled and everything, they're talking about the virus. So I was texting um, my teammates, seeing like what's going on, why, why is, like, is the tournament gonna to be canceled? Nobody knew anything. Because I called a couple of people I know in the Sunbelt Conference office and they said, coach, you ain't gonna hold tight. And we did, we pulled to the side and then we, we got that call. And about five minutes later, um, George Lee calls and says, hey, just got the, they're about to cancel the Sunbelt tournament. And I said, all right. And so I just remember looking at the bus and just turn around. Turned the bus back. I was like, what? This must be a joke. And they all said, COVID-19, we got to get back to the uh, campus. They were not happy about it. Uh, I looked back, stood up and looked in the back of the bus and guys were just, they were sad. It had to be us. It had to be this year, the year that we decide to really buy in and our hard work is being shown off. Um, it goes to waste, really. I felt bad for my teammates, um, I, but I always knew that it was possible to do it again. So that's why I really wasn't, really wasn't mad. I really wasn't tripping. Um, like you could just see it on everybody's face. We could just see it on everybody's face that everybody was sad. Um, you know, so we get back here, and as we get off the bus, you know, Coach Walker, hey, everyone go to the locker room. And I remember just going there, and it was a, it, it was a sad feeling because I think everyone kind of knew what was ahead. We got back uh, to the locker room. I sat down with the guys and said, hey, man, I'm proud of what you have accomplished. Do not put your head down. We have unfinished business. Uh, you had a heck of a season. Nobody can take that away from you guys. Uh, 
Let's just stay focused and see what's going to happen. If we play it, we do. If we don't, we still had a heck of a year, and we got, we got to get ready for next year to try to do it again. For three. No, it's a two, but it's down with 2.3 left for Manyong. Down by two. So they were coming. It's going to be Noel and maybe nobody else here. Apparently, they're playing for the last shot. Noel takes a very deep three. Got it! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! And your final score of tonight's game. Old Rock Cruz with 73, Old Rock 72. And answers! Ben Coupette scrapes the ceiling and throws down the poster. Old Rock forces another turnover. Monyon cleared for liftoff! Timeout, South Alabama. They got to make the trek here to the Arkansas capital city. That's got to be a tough road trip for them with the shot clock down to five. Noel from way downtown banks it in. See it paying off right there with Eaton. Lukic left wide open, and he's going to make Arkansas State pay once again. 16 times per game as Noel strips it loose, trying to beat Wilson behind the back. Coupette scrapes the ceiling and throws it down. That started on the defensive end for Little Rock with Coupette's denial of Wilson. He did an exceptional job denying Wilson the basketball off the Iverson cut. Marich passes on the three, takes it, and rack attack. You know, I've been here a long time. I've, I've worked on Razorback broadcasts, and, and I know Razorbacks are the big team. And Musselman's done a great job recruiting. One of the best college basketball teams in, in, the, in this region is going to play right here at the Jack Stevens Center this year. So don't, don't, don't wait till they won a bunch of games to come out here. They need your support, need your financial support, and we need butts in the stands. This arena set up sits, sits a little less than 6,000. Social distancing will not be a problem in this arena. Come see us play. We have unfinished business. That's, that's the thing that I started saying, and everybody's used it now, is unfinished business, and we do have unfinished business. Again, like to me, unfinished business is just doing it again. Like I want more, we want more. We know what we are capable of, and that's what unfinished business is doing again times two. Um, if we gave 100% effort last year, let's give it 200%. Um, that's what it really is. My expect, my expectations. Whatever we did last year, we got to do even better than that. Like even me, like I got those three awards. Like defensive player, I have to get that. I have to run that back again, uh, and then just try to get other awards if I can. Well, the first year, after we won 10 games and we came back, we had unfinished business. We, we weren't fully bought in on coaches' methods of teaching and what he wanted us to do, and we locked in. We, we locked in and we won the conference. So we finished our business and we were heading to the tournament. The tournament got cut short. So now we still have unfinished business. So now our goal is to get to the tournament and show, show what we got in the tournament. So that, that, to me, that's our unfinished business. For me personally, I think I got a lot of unfinished business because I sit out half of a year and then other half of a year I didn't play as good as I expected to be playing because I, I really put a lot of work in the summer and I felt like I'm going to help out our team a lot. And I was kind of disappointed with that, but my unfinished business is to keep working harder this summer and to help my teammates out whenever season starts. And also to get back at the same place we were last year as a team and win that conference again and go to the NCAA tournament. You know, I'd seen how much work they had put in. I'd seen the chip they had on their shoulder. You know, I'd seen the Marquise Noels out here at 1230. I'd seen Nicola and and Marco with John Barron at seven o'clock in the morning before they were eligible, you know, working, working their tails off. I'd seen them in the weight room. I'd seen them, you know, go through these these tough games and these practices. And at the end, you felt for the guys. You knew how hard they had worked, and that's why they have unfinished business.